Hello, I'm Danny. It's me. Yeah, there's a couple of things going on here. I got asked to do a talk about how to present yourself in front of a camera. One minute. Oh, let me hit my feet. And I'm trying to look after a puppy at the same time. And this is Pixel. Pixel is absolutely gorgeous in my puppy. Anyway, I got asked to do a, a talk about um, how to be a YouTuber and also how to, you know, set yourself up, really. And I thought, well, a mate of mine filmed it for me. And then I thought, why don't I do one of those um, things where I talk over my own video? <laughs> so if you would like to stick around and watch me do a presentation about how come I'm a YouTuber and what my hidden agenda was at actually becoming a YouTuber. And you might find it inspirational. I'll try not to talk too much along the way and I'll make it into a nice big screen and let's get started and listen to me talk about my journey as a YouTuber. I have the pleasure of introducing Danny. Now, Danny is um, a YouTuber in the making and um, he's going to talk today about Trusting your authentic self with YouTube, how to get YouTube famous and how to get known on YouTube. <laughs> Welcome to Danny talking about YouTube. Hello. 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 Just attract people, start speaking, people come in. <laughs> That's the dream, anyway, isn't it? Um, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Danny DeHick. And I've been on a quest for the last probably five or six years to become a public speaker. I'm dyslexic, and I literally have a reading and a writing level of a nine-year-old. I got tested when I was about 23 years of age. So the other day when I'm at a counter and I had to fill out some documents, I said to the lady, I can't read and write, you won't be able to read and write And then she looked at me like, oh. And I said, I'm dyslexic. She says, don't worry, my nephew is dyslexic, and he just takes longer to fill out documents and push them back. Went to see that lady a month later, used the same line, and she said, no worries, I'll do all the paperwork for you. <laughs> but it is a story of my life. When you are dyslexic, people don't understand what it means. So how does a dyslexic person become a YouTuber? Why did a dyslexic person want to put together speeches and get on YouTube? Good question, that one, isn't it, eh? Oh, I like the way I asked that question. Do you know? Because I don't. <laughs> I owned a business networking company and I've done it for eight years. My goal was to get businesses together and help them uh, network. And before COVID happened, I had 150 businesses that I used to get together each week. And I used to run about eight, nine meetings a week. And I was running around like a blue ass fly, to be honest. One thing that really worked well was doing little uh, educational snippets, 15 to 20 minutes long. When somebody didn't turn up for the meeting and couldn't do the presentation, I'd, put, I'd have 35 to 40 different little wee PowerPoint presentations available. And I'd literally um, put one up and I'd teach people what hashtags were and how to use them. I'd teach people how to set up their Facebook pages, their Instagram accounts, and they found them of great value. So when COVID happened, uh, I basically, my business networking people that we had all got together to help and support each other, basically dispersed, and I could see the life drain out of them at every Zoom meeting we did trying to keep it together. And I was exhausted. I was running five Zoom meetings a day, <laughs> sitting on my sofa, and then I thought, what can I do with my talent? Because I'm losing people left, right and centre. And I said, I know what I'll do. Those little wee snippets that I've been teaching people, I will make them into workshops. And I'll put these workshops online and people can watch them and pay me money. Brilliant. How hard can it be? So I produced 10 workshops. I set up uh, a pretty clever system for doing so. I won't get into that. Would you believe that one of my courses that has been quite successful it has been 67 people have accessed it, 10 people have started it, the other 57 haven't even logged in or finished it, 
that they've got at the end, they're going to do it one day. Out of that 10 people, only half of them got through the course. I thought, what is it with people? How can I get them engaged? My courses weren't that bad, even if I may say so myself, but people just don't have time to do these things. And it drives me crazy. So I've done 10 courses, got distracted. I started looking around the internet and I saw some amazing YouTubers, like Rob Woolley, for example. <laughs> and I thought, I want to be a YouTuber. How do I do it? What can, what can I do? So I started playing around on the internet. Now, at this time, I'd already had 400 videos online. I had 300 subscribers. I'm a traveller, I'm a street photographer, and I thought, I oh, know what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Bangladesh, I'm going to go to India, and China. Everyone wants to go to China, especially two weeks before COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so there I was, filming myself on TikTok. 850,000 people watched one of my videos. I thought, I'm going to be famous. The videos, each side of that, never got any traction. I was filming people, dead bodies being burnt. In what place? Uh, Varanasi. Varanasi. People were fascinated by that. That's why they watched the video. Didn't get much feedback. 1,100 people commented. My life didn't change. Mm, scratching my head. So then I started, um, some dear friend of mine encouraged me to get into a Ponzi scheme. And they told me about this opportunity of... Can you guess which one it is? <laughs> lifetime. And I looked at it for two minutes and thought, oh my God, they're trying to scam me so they can build their downline and upline. And this person was really persistent and they said some things that really pissed me off because I hate people who scam people. So I thought, I'm going to do a video about it. And it got traction. I finally found that if you want to produce content and you want to get traffic, you've got to do things that are trending. I want to produce videos to help people with workshops and I want to get paid a little fee for it. No one's interested in that. I want to do public speaking about being dyslexic and my journey as a dyslexic person. No one's interested in it. <laughs> so I've, um, I'm going to basically just show you my YouTube channel. Um, this is the main scam that I've been busting lately. I've now got to the art of being able to produce videos within about three hours. So yesterday I did two videos and they've had 280 views. Um, and it's probably not what I wanted to be, is an internet scam buster and exposing, because you've got to be pretty much investiv uh, investigative reporter style. In this video here, I actually managed to get on the Zoom meeting and ask the people running the meeting some very difficult questions live. And I come up with the questions because I was chatting to other people, some in this room even, <laughs> while well, they was watching in, and they were helping me come up with some ideas and things I could say. But anyway, I'm just going to give you an overview of my YouTube channel so you get the idea. Um, I've got a podcast as well. Uh, I've got workshops. I've got a LinkedIn course, which I'm giving away. I've got 80 videos about Ponzi schemes. I've got a business networking company. And then here I am in China. Um, I used to have a New Zealand information network website. And, um, but my most popular video to date is how to fillet a brown trout. <laughs> this video has been online for eight years and has had 185,000 people view it. When I first put that video online, I decided to take it off the internet. I don't want to have that sort of content. My friend who said that helped promote my batch, can you put it back online? I went, okay. So I put it back online, I had 50,000 views at that time and now it's back online. Makes me hilarious. This video here, 15,000 views, it's two hours, two and a half hours long, and everyone said, oh, people don't like long videos. Rubbish. It's made me $150 so far, that video. It's two hours of long, it's badly done, it's poor. This video here, that it's got most traffic, was filmed on my cell phone after I caught a brown trout. You know, and I'm holding this up here, and it's, it's educational, it's clear, it's got good sound, which is really interesting. And as you can see here, it's me trying to be a uh, V-blogger. So um, I've got photos of me in tuk-tuks. Look at this, eight views. It's got to change my life. Six <laughs> views. Nailed it. Five views in a tuk-tuk. Fear in my life. Trying to film with a, a long bungee cord thing out the window as a guy's driving around the streets of Bangladesh. A selfie stick. I couldn't get that right. And I've got five views for that effort. Going across a, a river with this guy looking at me, he's going to kill me. You know, four views. So it didn't really work. So that's one part of it. I'll have to swap devices. So I have got a method of my madness. Um, now the other thing which I have found quite successful, out of my YouTube channel today, B 
been going for two and a half months as monetized. $2,000 is how much I've made. Not bad. Especially since I've already produced 400 videos, made no money, and only had 300 subscribers. So within two months, I found where the trend is, produced 80 videos, and made $2,000. So what I do, which is a wee bit more unique, if I can get that plain, is I have a website called danny.co.nz. I now use, I, I record the YouTube video, and I put the, I drag the video over to this program that makes all the voice turn into text. So I get that text, and I turn that into a blog. And then I embed the thumbnail and the video into a great big long blog that was 2,000, I think it was 220,000 words. And I just let that marinate in the search engine, so I'll just give you an idea. And I let So if you want to check out the website that I'm talking about, obviously it's my website, but you can go to dehek.com. So it's D-E-H-E-K.com, or you can go to danny.co.nz. And that gets you to my website and click on blogs and you can see the thousand blogs that I have on my website. Google throw adverts all the way through it. Now, when you go to my website, you won't see these adverts, but all my blogs, which I have a thousand blogs online, because when you're dyslexic, you have a burning desire to write content, right? <laughs> <laughs> but all these adverts, um, you know, $400 I get a month from letting Google plagiarise my website with their adverts. So $2,400 is how much money I've made from being a YouTuber, which is not bad, but I have to understand how videos work. Now let's go to something a bit interesting. Now this is the part that you've all been waiting for. <laughs> the problem with being a YouTuber. He's the problem. I might just see if I can make that screen a bit bigger because th otherwise you guys aren't going to see it very uh, well. Um, but it's more, a, yeah, it's probably a bit better. So I've enlarged that so you can see a bit better. Hopefully I won't need to move it around, but I'll stop it and readjust if we need to. But just listen closely and you'll get the gist of what I'm on about. There is a problem. <laughs> That's a real problem. Uh, Rob, how long has it taken you to set yourself up half the way you want to be? Around about a year. <laughs> a year. Phone call from a dear friend of mine yesterday who is a professional speaker, works for a very skilled public speaking company called Schoolset, rang me up and said, I've seen you've been doing a lot of videos, I want to ask you some advice. I want to be able to record myself <coughs> like Rob is doing, but I don't want to spend the money, and I want to buy a USB mic, what would you recommend? And I'm going, oh my God. I rang up Rob, got to tell you this story, Rob. We just laughed and laughed and laughed. If you want to get into this game, I could give you a list of things you need. If I went to Rob, he would give you a list of things you need, and both lists would be different. Because you really have to identify what you're trying to accomplish. Rob's style, this is really good stuff, and I'm serious. <laughs> Rob's style is different than my style. Rob's gear is different than my gear. But at the end of the day, we both have to have a mission to figure out what you want to do. Very, very good antics. And I was getting quite excited. And she said, who am I talking to? Now, I'll just stop Rob there. Now, Rob is a stutterer. Well, he used to be, he still is, and he struggles with it. And just a little background on Rob, because he did... A, a program called the Maguire program that helps stutterers, okay? Rob's got right to the top of Toastmasters in New Zealand. So I forget now, but there's, um, I think there's 200 clubs in New Zealand. So to get there is quite amazing. But being a stutterer and actually managing to get to the top of a speaking organisation is kind of ironic. Now, I will try and make the little wee icon on the left hand side pop up and go watch Rob's full video it's really good it explains you can see the transformation uh, of Rob over the years and I'm a good mate of Rob's and I can honestly say I don't um, even notice he stutters 
Um, but he's a brilliant speaker and he's, um, I think he's come second in New Zealand for public speaking. I could have that wrong, but he's obviously ran the whole club as well. So anyway, back to Rob. And I'm so excited. I just couldn't get anything out. So it wasn't a case of me not saying it's Rob or um, Rob or uh, Rob or anything like that. I just could not get anything out. I completely froze, completely blocked. And the lady said, if you're not prepared to tell me your name, I'm not prepared to deal with you. And hung up. And so I lost that sound. Okay, so Rob's done really well with that because he's got good lighting, he's got good sound, and he's got a bookcase in the background. <laughs> that is impossible to do. Uh, I, on the other hand, I wanted to be Danny at the bottom left-hand side of the screen. I want to use a green screen, and I didn't want this... Kitchen. Uh, the kitchen look. <laughs> so I had a green screen propped up. When you start using green screen, it just goes horrible because uh, you use a lot of process power on your computer. The sound doesn't... Uh, audio doesn't mix up with the, and your lips are out of sync, and it causes a whole lot of other problems. But I got so sick of it one day that I thought, oh, stuff it, I'm just going to show people what I'm trying, where I am, what I'm doing, and this is what I come up with. Now, just bear in mind, I'm trying to remember what I want to say. I have notes written out, and I'm trying to read them. So this is a year ago at least. Today, well, I was going to say welcome, but I'm dyslexic, and I keep having to look at my notes to read what I've written down, so I'm just going to have to add lip this. So as you notice, I am actually Danny Dehemp and welcome along to my workshops. So what I want to actually tell you with my notes if I can't look down and read is that <laughs> you want to become a better version of yourself. It's something I'm personalising. Oh, I can never get that word right. <laughs> so, so I really am a true believer that of embracing technology. I use technology in my life all day long. And I want to use technology to maximise my potential and I also want to help you maximise your potential by sharing my experience, knowledge and skills. So I haven't actually got my green screen up. It's, uh, to actually get that happening is actually quite difficult. So for the intro video, I just want to show you that I'm recording all these workshops in my kitchen. That means I'm going to get interruptions along the way. Cue the interruption. Cue the interruption. <laughs> Right, and also there might be a dog barking every now and again. So we're pretty casual here. This isn't actually a polished recording studio because we're all making... Welcome. Yeah, so I, got, I, give it, I gave up and I just thought, I'm just going to tell people how it is. That, that, that honestly, is the best thing I ever did because as I did that 50 times and I still couldn't be relaxed, I still couldn't be myself and I didn't have any faith and belief that I could do this. So now, this is actually the look I was trying to accomplish, even though I look like I'm white and pasty. To Danny DeHeck's workshops, I'm actually Danny DeHeck, <laughs> and it's lovely to meet you. Oh. Notice I looked away? <laughs> My brain's going, I said it. And then, um, and also, I don't know if you noticed in the previous video, I went, and I went, so, and I went, um. And all those, and I'm listening to this, I'm listening to myself back, and I think, oh my god, I sound terrible. And I've had all this speaker training, where if you feel like saying um, you pause. And here I am, I'm, I'm going to upload this to YouTube with all the mistakes. Or do I keep rehearsing and waiting until I become the person I actually am? Because when you watch everyone else on YouTube, they're brilliant. And I think is YouTube only there for brilliant people? Obviously not. <laughs> I want to help you become a better version of yourself. I'm a true believer of embracing technology See, I'm reading it off the screen. So I've got a, a camera up here, and I've got the words right here, and I thought, no one will notice. <laughs> my glasses. You couldn't see my eyes. I, you know, I, I've got lighting in my eyes. And I'm thinking, I need to have eye contact. David Clarkson told me that. <laughs> and using it to maximise your potential. Now, if you're on my workshop area of my website, and you scroll down a little bit, you will actually see I have quite a few workshops Alrighty, so that, that's what, now this is a video I did last week, alright, this guy is a scammer, and I managed to find out, I love Canva, if you're going to do any YouTuber, get into Canva, you got Canva yet? Canva. Canva is a place where you can actually get, this was actually moving, but long stretch, uh, this gold bars, all the graphics that you ever dream of are on Canva, and you can make these, 
icons that look flashy and people click on them more if you have better thumbnails. So um, this guy basically posted a scam comment on my one of my websites, uh, on my video, so I thought I'd do a video on him. Don't even do that. Oh, I see it, doesn't it? G'day! <laughs> hey, I'm a little bit pissed off, and I've had a glass of wine. <laughs> my computer keeps making freaking noises. I'll just put it on to recording mode. That's my theme music for my podcast that I'm using for my YouTube channel. That's exciting. Hey, if you really want to piss Danny off, what you do is you go to the YouTube channel and you go to the comment section and you tell everyone about what you're doing. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with current events, mate, I hate Ponzi schemes and I hate scammers that are trying to scam people. This gumpy has come along to my YouTube channel telling everyone that he's investing in God's own investment opportunity. And I want to share it with you. So bear with me as I flip into my YouTube channel. And here's my favourite video. 27,000 people have watched me say these amazing words. Yeah. From Hyperverse. Hello everyone, I'm Danny De Heck, And I'm your saviour from Hyperverse. <laughs> formerly known as Hyperfuck. Isn't that a great video? Thank you so much for being commented on that video. But do not do what the next guy decided to do. So I'm going to have this read to you and I'm just going to let you marinate in what this guy is saying. So let me uh, turn it down so I don't blow your eardrums and here we go. God's money, gold and silver will never be worth zero. I believe I was scammed by Hyperfund Hyperverse, and now I found a company that has been in business since 2019, and I am able to buy physical silver and gold coins and have them delivered to my house for $30. I cannot get scammed because I have the coin in my possession. Very, very exciting. So, if you were watching that video and you decided that was a good idea to post that comment, on my YouTube channel, or YouTube channel, not only there, but also on my other videos, exactly the same paragraph. What a cunning idea! <laughs> you can't get anyone for your own YouTube channel, so you can go to my YouTube channel and try to scam people that have been scammed or who are researching to figure out whether they are about to get scammed or not. You are a legend! Hello, everybody. <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed, but I made lots of mistakes when I filmed that. I had problems with my audio gear, and I've learnt, rather than trying to wait to be perfect, you'd rather be good today than perfect tomorrow, because tomorrow never comes. And any time I make a mistake, I just basically, you know, like, I, I, oh, the big difference with Rob and myself, Rob is quite happy to edit his videos. I'm like a live streamer YouTuber, and I basically press record like I'm live streaming, but at the end of it, I'm ready to upload my video. And the reason I do that is I want to upload two or three videos a day because that's kind of what you need to do to get yourself traction. But the software I'm using has made it a lot more easier. This this one here is... I'm, I'm Danny De Heck, and I'm your saviour <laughs> from Hyperverse. Formerly known as... I thought I was crazy doing that video, but 27,000 people have watched it. And it's made me probably another 150 bucks. Hyper fun. And look, I'm reading off a teleprompter, I'm trying to read the notes, and I'm trying to keep the flow going. <laughs> and still people watch it. Do you know why they rebranded? Because people were confirming that Hyper Fun was a Ponzi scam. Since celebrating their relaunch and their new name on 5th of December 2020, Hyper Fun say they have received overwhelming feedback and threats from their own community. All right, so you get the idea. Ryan, Sam, this in. and the new CEO, <coughs> Stephen. So if you're not familiar with Hyperverse and you're tempted yeah. to um, get involved, I recommend not. Um, <laughs> um, but, that, but along the way, you try different things. Honestly, you just got to get out there. If you want to be a YouTuber, just get out there, start putting videos on, put 400 videos on like me, and then realise you're not doing something right because no one's looking at it. So you might as well change tactics and go with what the trend is. I mean, I didn't really think I'm going down this road, but... In addition, oh, 50 financial authorities. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is how I usually start it off. Look. So that's just some of the video covers I've done. I haven't seen you for ages. <laughs> 
and I'm really concerned about your financial future. Mate, so am I. Oh, good, good, mate. Why is that? You know, have you got a solution for me? I might do, see. I've just had this really awesome opportunity, um, and I can basically, if you give me three or four hundred dollars, I can actually give you... Hello, I'm Danny yeah. Heck. Thanks for <laughs> pressing. Yeah, um, so that was sort of a bit funny, but Rob and I tried that on the spot, chucked it on the internet, six, seven hundred people have looked at it so far, but as soon as we did that, we realised there were other problems. My camera that I've got, like Rob's, doesn't focus on me and Rob at the same time. So either I'm clear and he's blurry. And then my microphone gear, trying to catch the two people talking at the same time. Rob's trying out a new microphone tonight. I'm waiting to see what it sounds like when I get the video. The directional mics. Which I must say, it does sound pretty good. You know, actually. musical microphones. They all record. Sorry, <laughs> I must say his microphone's quite good and what he has got is um, my camera that I'm talking to you guys on at the moment is actually a Sony um, A6400 and I have a prime lens on it. Now, what that basically means is my hand focus, my, my face is blurry. So then when I come back, it focuses on my face. So if I'm holding up um, a bit of technology and going, look at that there it will focus really crystal clear on it, but I'm blurry, so it's no point. So it's great for my type of whatever. But anyway, I have a studio mic and I can sound quite good. Mike has, sorry, um, Rob has a camera on top, sorry, a Rode microphone on top of his camera, which captures the sound. Now I'm standing, I think about six or seven meters away from the camera microphone and it's still picking me up really well um, and it also would not focus on the um, air conditioning unit that was behind the camera which is even better so it's quite good and it was only a $200 um, what do you call it oh I'm going to move my microphone now I'll probably even sound better so it's only a $200 microphone the one I'm talking to you on now is a $700 microphone but my microphone would not work in that room, <laughs> which is ironic. But anyway, I'll let us continue. It would sound differently. Every scenario, every setup that you do when you're doing a YouTube, you need to think about what you need to do and then find somebody who's doing something very similar and ask them about their camera setup and listen to them. Um, this is just a bit of fun and I think I'm just about out of time. This is a three minute video, but this is what I'm trying to do at the moment because I'm finding I get more and more traction the sillier I'm getting on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. H from Hyper Nation has just released a little wee video and I thought I'd do a bit of a premiere. So I, I might actually stop that and get you the real version so you can see it. Um, I'll see if I can find it. Uh, right, I'm going to resize that uh, to fit. <coughs> Here's my coughing. I had COVID a wee while ago and I've still got it. Radio, And I'm going to go all the way to that video there and we'll play the actual video it's a bit beefy at the start with the music so bear with me as we kick it off it's gonna be good if we can find the right button here we go Woo. did tell you it would be beefy <laughs> H, welcome to the house. Can you feel the magic in the air? Yeah, I can see it. Right now, as we advance towards a new age of information technology, Look at it. it is hard not to marvel at the endless possibilities that it can confer. While some of us are excited about this change. I should actually explain to you that Mr. H is actually part of Hypernation, and Hypernation is a, a Ponzi scheme, and they've been putting out a whole lot of commercials um, promoting it so they can entice people to sign up in their memberships, which are all um, people going to lose their money. So I sort of, every now and again, there'll be a two or three minute video out there and I just pluck them out and do my commentary over top of them. So don't think Mr. H is a good idea to invest, but I just wanted to take the mickey out of Mr. H and the whole scam, to be honest. So this is what I'm doing. Many more are fearful of it and for good reasons. There are many disadvantages that can arise in this new age, with dead ends and pitfalls awaiting those unprepared to navigate this dynamic environment. 
As work becomes more automated, people with manual skills will find it increasingly difficult to be of value in the digital economy. These are dangerous times, as those swept aside by the information age will not go away quietly. They will resort to violence in a futile attempt to retain the status quo. We call the Luddites, the early 19th century textile workers in Great Britain who destroyed textile machines to protest their loss of work. Is that not history about to repeat itself? Humans fear what they don't understand, and there is nothing they fear more at the moment than the rise of the metaverse. For those who are afraid of this change, Hypernation is here to alleviate your fears. The information age is not something to be afraid of. Hypernation stands as the greatest and most technologically advanced nation within the metaverse, and its citizens are the cream of the crop when it comes to proficiency in the blockchain industry. Hypernation shall serve as the refuge for those who are seeking sanctuary. A vibrant economy shall spring forth through the actions of our citizens, dwarfing the physical economy of today. Digital jobs will be created, and you can earn income as a digital nomad traveling around the world. Can you sing? No. Imagine yourself surrounded by an entire stadium of virtual audiences tapping to the rhythm of your song. Can you paint? No. Imagine the fruits of your creativity hanging on the walls in every virtual house. Buy and sell virtual land depending on the market climate and demand. Create digital accessories from head to toe. The world of tomorrow is your oyster. And that world is Hypernation. Well, there's another video from Mr. H. He's uh, building the <coughs> ecosystem in his head. Hmm. Get the idea of that one anyway. Uh, just make sure I shut down the right one. Speakers group. Uh, now, I won't make you watch that again, but you sort of get the idea of what I'm showing people there. Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Whoop, there it is. And so, in conclusion, hopefully. Depending on the market climate and demand, create digital accessories from head to toe. The world of tomorrow is your oyster, and that world is hypernation. Yeah. Well, so I think I'll stop there, but you get the yeah. idea. I mean, I, I don't really want to have my brand, my name, myself associated with Ponzi schemes, but at the moment I'm playing around because the original goal was actually to figure out how to get a thousand subscribers to monetize my YouTube channel, and then I was going to put together a workshop showing people how I did it. And then I can say in six weeks, I got a thousand subscribers, made two thousand dollars. Would you like to do the same? Do my course. However, this is now eventuated into something else. I'm thinking, some of these guys that have 250,000 people watch one video must be making a lot of money out of this. If I've only had, I don't know. So, I don't know if that's helpful for you, but uh, I think what I'm experiencing is you never know where it's gonna take you. Why not go down that road? I don't know if I'll be a successful YouTuber, but I've made a start. This year, the next 12 months, Takes me. Yes. Mm. Uh, how, how does YouTube pay for videos? Like, do you get paid by the men? So, a few questions and answers. He just asked me, how does um, YouTube pay us for the money? Um, and I didn't actually, well, I don't really know. So, how about that? Or per viewer? Or no, I think it's worked out like the most I've ever had is 57,000 um, visitors to my YouTube channel in a month. And I stopped producing videos. And that dropped down to um, this month. I think I'm about twenty-seven thousand. So I'm at half. And um, this month's total was about four hundred dollars. Last month was thirteen hundred. So to keep the game going, you've got to keep treading the water. You've got to literally do two or three videos a day to sort of find out what works. Is it by adverts on your video too? That you I don't know how they yeah. get the money. I think they just look how many views you've got and give you a percentage of the <laughs> advertisers. I'm not sure if when people click on the ads it makes a difference because they give you an estimated revenue stream. I must say you don't actually need to be fully educated before you start a project. Because I did leave school at the age of 14, a lot of the things I do in life I start, I'll, I'll tell you a story, but in um, Panama, um, uh, a guy I knew who used to work there said that they don't actually um, do the blueprints um, before they start building, they actually find a piece of land, start clearing it, 
and digging the holes and doing all the drainage before they even have finished designing the buildings that go on these lands. So it's kind of like what I do. I don't fully investigate everything before I start. You said you're not doing editing, but you've got like two or three different streams of stuff going on at the same time. Yeah. I, if I had my way, I'd go spend $20,000 on recording here tomorrow. I'd buy myself the state-of-the-art PFS computer ever instead of a laptop. Well, um, are you using like OBS or what? No, I use one called Mini Cam. Mini. So, if you are wondering what Peter's software I just said, I will put it in the notes here. But minicam.co.nz is the one I use. And it basically enables me to shoot from this look to this look um, and, and set up different scenes. So, if I wanted to, I think I'd go to four, it will just bring up my green screen. So it's pretty cool. And I'm using an iPad Pro in front of me and I'm using another piece of software which is called Stream Deck. And that basically enables me to be able to hit a device underneath my 34 inch screen monitor rather than trying to click on the software on the screen at the same time. And every now and again that stuffs up because um, you'll see that I'll have the wrong screen in front and I'll be trying to click on this screen but my mouse will be stuck on this screen so it's not a perfect scenario and that's why I'd probably love to find the right software that these guys that have these prestige YouTube channels use and um, maybe afford a license which will probably cost me three or four hundred dollars a month to have but in the meantime I buy a bit of software that only cost a few hundred dollars well I think it cost 99 US dollars for a license for Minicam and OBS, which this guy's asked me about, is actually a free piece of software. But if you look at my skin color now, and also if you notice my hand is green, and that's called bleeding. So I'm actually, while I'm talking to you, I must have not um, done a setting. And I have. So I'm going to change my color. And you'll see my hair has gone green. And see, I can take that out with Minicam. I can't figure out how to do that with OPS. And also there's another function here called smoothness. And that will enable me to, if you look around my hair, you can see that I'm taking a few of the rough bits off. So that kind of helps. If I was a lady and I had more curlier hair, it enables me to be able to cut me out nicer. And then I can literally bring up a bit of software. So let's change the background now. I can be uh, in Hawaii, and you can see now that doesn't look too good around my hair because you can see I'm cut out. So what I've learned lately is I, I'll get videos and I'll put them behind me. So if I wanted to have fish behind me, I could do that, which may not be very interesting when you're not talking about, but I really like the OBS, uh, sorry, I, um, Minicam. Now if you go to minicam.co.nz, it is actually my affiliate link. And if you do sign up, I do get, um, I think, $17 from um, your, uh, what am I trying to say, I, from your purchasing it. And that is another way that you can make a little bit of money. But to be honest, I think I've actually only ever made $17. And I think it was when I purchased it myself. So don't go out there thinking you're going to be rich. And that's why what really nurks me when people say, oh, you, you know, you're making all this money on YouTube. And I know you're hidden agenda. So then they often say, oh, you, 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 you don't really care about hyperverse and people being scammed. You're just trying to get followers and subscribers and uh, make money off your YouTube channel. And it's like, oh, guys, it's the most lamest thing. And that's something we hear all the time as a YouTuber. But I've got better things to do in my life. Like this video, it's, uh, today it's Thursday, and I've got a, a new puppy that's sleeping at my feet, thank goodness. And I haven't had a chance to do a video. But to get in the right mindset and to be able to put a video online actually takes me all day. And also, because I am a perfectionist, even though my whole life is a spelling bee and I'm, I can't you know, express myself the way I want to come across all the time as part of dyslexia. So I've got to get myself in the right frame of mind and I've got to be prepared to be out, make mistakes and not overanalyze it. And then what I got told as a public speaker when I was doing some training is if you make a mistake, you know, it's not the end of the world, but you can bring the mistake in. Now, a good example of this, I've got a friend 
called Mark Witte, and he was a paid speaker, and he used to travel around New Zealand. People used to hire him to come and motivate them, the staff, and he would speak in, you know, in front of hundreds of people. And one day he got so charismatic that he actually stepped off the front of the stage, and he didn't hurt himself. His name was Mark, Mark, Mark Witte, <laughs> and he's very witty, but he still was mic'd up, and he said, I will now be taking questions from the floor. And I, that was brilliant. And that's what you've got to do. You know, rather than any situation that happens, embrace it. If you have a glass of wine when you're doing this stuff, often you will slur your words, not because you're drunk, just because it's hard to be pronounced and speak clearly. So why not show people your glass of wine and why not tell people you had a glass of wine? That sort of stuff I'm talking about. I'll let this guy finish up and then we'll be out of here, but let's see. You can, but, um, you know, I've got a course Coming out on it. <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah. a switch on your desk though, don't you? Yeah. That's how he gets those different looks. Because mm. it's like a like what a vision mixer would do in television. You know, cutting between cameras, that's yeah. what you've got. I mean it's sick what I've learned to do, and I'm quite proud of it, but it's not smooth. And there's imperfection. And what I've learned to do is don't worry about the mistakes. And that's what Rob and I have always I laugh at Rob because you want perfection. I want perfection, but I've given up. And I'm just being authentic and I'm going to ask stuff this. That's who I am. And I'm, yeah, love me for walks and all. You do, Danny, darling? <laughs> that is my partner, by the way. It's actually way harder to do than what you think as well because I started doing some introductions for some of my courses. And my golly, when you look back at yourself, you just pick up every little thing that, you know, you can see that's wrong and um, you pick it apart, don't you? And you just think everything doesn't quite look right and what other people wouldn't see, you can see that. So I, we were doing a video one time, Danny was helping me and how many takes did we do? Probably 30 or 40 takes. And then I ended up having a red wine and that, that was... <laughs> even worse um so don't have a red wine when you're trying to do it but yeah it, it's an well tell people you have as yeah, well do. Yeah, you know um yeah. you know you know accentuate your yeah full transparency yeah yeah, yeah. 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 It's just and I think that's the trick, we'll leave that there, but I think that is the trick is if you want to start doing YouTube videos, don't think you're not good enough. Like I said at the start, the video that was filmed of my mate filleting my brown trout that I caught is actually my most looked at video. Now, it's not a studio quality video. It was filmed on my phone, for goodness sake. And the next one was when I had a Zoom meeting and I'm trying to incorporate three people speaking at the same time and I'm trying to use my settings and it's going wrong, but I still got good traction out of that video. I think it's been viewed, I think it's 15,000 times. And ironically, Mark Gardner, the guy that actually um, was in the video, who was telling me that Hyperverse was a sure thing and I should invest and it's easy to get your money out of it. Um, he was um, he was giving me quite a hard time and people were telling me off at the time that I was disrespectful to him. But he was also telling me that I'm going to edit this video and I'm going to manipulate it and I'm going to, I know what you're doing and I know you're monetizing and all that sort of stuff. So it was quite a hard case. Hey, one minute, I've got to get my dog before he wheezes on the floor. about that but anyway hey thanks for watching so if you're wondering why i'm a youtuber and you and you want some tips by all means come along and ask me um this is he's cuddling into me this is um pixel and he is a schnoodle which is um half american schnauzer and um a toy poodle he's absolutely gorgeous all right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. But yeah, if you want to get into YouTubing um, and you want to ask any advice, just put some comments at the bottom of this. Um, you know, by, by all means, you know, when you guys like a video and you comment, it sends it out to uh, YouTube more and I get more people uh, listening, especially when you guys subscribe. So there you go. There's the, that's why I'm a YouTuber. I hope you've enjoyed my story and thanks for watching. I'll go take this uh, little boy out to the toilet and he says goodbye, but he's very tired. He's been sleeping. Excuse me. He's been sleeping at my feet for the last 45 minutes, luckily. All right. Have a good night, guys. Day.
morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you watch it. I'm Danny De Heck, and look, I'll, I'll, now I've got the things all stuff. I've got some music. I'm Danny De Heck. Thanks for watching my YouTube video and the secrets of how I became a YouTuber. My hidden agenda and what I'm really doing it for. Is it for money? Or do I want to expose people that are getting scammed by Ponzi schemes? That's it. That's what I want to do. I don't want people to get scammed. I want you guys to get educated. And I'm going to go now. Have a good one.